Investors are so fixated on the impact of banks from rising interest rates, they perhaps are overlooking key trends the banks are seeing on the ground in their own local communities. Some of those trends include higher wages, rising food inflation, and of course, expensive housing. Let's talk more about all this with Carver Federal Savings Bank President and CEO Michael Pugh. Michael, always nice to get some time with you. Uh, to that end, uh, what are you hearing uh, within the communities your banks serve with regards to all these economic issues? Yeah, so good morning. It's good to see you again, uh, Brian. I think, you know, within our communities, one of the key things that uh, many of our small businesses are thinking about is access to capital, tools and resources that will help them uh, reshape their businesses. Um, you know, for the communities that we serve, largely have been populated by uh, minorities. Uh, and so if you think about black and brown communities, what we know is that a significant number of uh, our small businesses within uh, the African-American communities uh, were at the brink of closing their doors, specifically small businesses and closing their doors uh, because of being hit by the pandemic. Um, so we have been spending a significant amount of time trying to help those businesses reimagine uh, and to get the access to capital, the tools that they need in order to uh, remain strong and uh, survive. Michael, it's Julie here. I want to ask you to expand on that a little bit. You guys are also designated as a community development financial institution, and you and your peers have really served an essential role in communities during this pandemic period. Um, what has the situation been like in terms of getting PPP and other types of government funds to businesses uh, that need it? Um, and do you think that there has been sort of more friction or more um, trouble getting those funds into minority communities? Yeah, I think it was uh, certainly in the beginning stages of uh, the CARES Act and the Paycheck Protection Program, uh, the beginning stages presented some real challenges for getting the funds out there to the true small businesses. We know that the Small Business Administration defines small businesses as uh, ones that have 500 or less employees. But what we often see is that many of the small businesses uh, within our communities, again, here in greater New York City, have less than 50 employees. And so those businesses, in many cases, don't have the technical resources, the tools needed. They don't have an accountant on staff or an attorney on staff to help them navigate through um, you know, a significant amount of paperwork. And so in the first tranches of the Paycheck Protection Program, many of those businesses did not uh, get their applications submitted in a timely basis and able to participate. We were uh, fortunate to be financial first responders and work very closely with small businesses, hand-holding them through the process. And just uh, for our you know, our, our bank, which again has been uh, here very hyper local focused in greater New York City, we were very proud to be able to provide more than $50 million in access to capital to small businesses. But one of the other metrics that we frankly looked at and we felt very proud of is that more than 5,000 jobs were preserved by providing that access to capital. I think the key thing that small businesses have learned is that it is important to have relationships with community banks, because there's certainly a lot more accessibility to decision makers. Uh, and I think the key thing that uh, the community at large has continued to focus on is thinking broadly about tools, resources that will ultimately help these small businesses uh, thrive. And of course, the pandemic now the, in this phase, inflation is a big, big issue for small businesses and large businesses for that matter. And so those resources and tools that you talk about, what is necessary right now, both from the bank itself to serve the community and also from the federal government, whether you think there is more aid that is needed to flow through to these small businesses? Yeah, yeah. Well, Capital continues to be one of the most important things for small businesses. Getting access to capital through various programs that will allow them to uh, uh, further uh, build the tools, the resources that they need, whether it's new equipment or uh, frankly hiring 
talent uh, that will further support their businesses. But we know that uh, capital remains king or queen when we think about uh, small businesses and supporting them. I think also workforce development will remain a, a very important part, helping uh, to provide tools, resources that will allow small businesses to efficiently train and develop staff um, that will remain critical. And then, uh, you know, one really important thing is helping small businesses develop stronger business plans and strategies that will ultimately lead to uh, their growth and sustainability. We implemented a program uh, that has been very effective in terms of supporting small businesses on the financial education side. We've been proud to say that we've educated more than 16,000 people through financial education workshops and programs, but specifically for small businesses, the programs that we've really tried to hone in on is helping them walk through business plans, marketing plans, and thinking broadly about how they reach their customers uh, in a digital age. And so I think more work uh, is certainly needed uh, and we'll continue the journey there. Uh, good to uh, always get some time with you. Carver Federal Savings Bank, President CEO Michael Pugh, good to see you. We'll talk to you soon.